It's now been almost six years since we learned that for many years, Volkswagen Group was cheating on the diesel emissions certification tests that uh, are required to put a new vehicle on sale. Their vehicles were doing great on the actual certification tests in the lab, but as soon as they got out in the real world, most of the emission control systems for the diesels were basically shut off and they were emitting far more nitrogen oxide emissions than was allowed by law. As a result of that, Volkswagen ended up paying tens of billions of dollars in fines to regulators around the world and here in the U.S. buying back almost half a million vehicles from consumers that didn't pass the requirements. In the wake of that scandal known as Dieselgate, Volkswagen completely pivoted their strategy for re reducing greenhouse gas emissions from its vehicles, abandoning diesel and shifting almost entirely to battery electric vehicles. They've developed several platforms for battery electric vehicles within the group. They've got premium EVs that are currently available as the Porsche Taycan, and in the next few months we'll be launching the uh, Audi e-tron GT, and more models from other of the high-end VW brands like Bentley and Bugatti. But for more affordable mainstream vehicles, they developed another platform, which is known as MEB, which is the acronym for the German uh, name, which translates to Modular Electric Toolkit. And so what that gives them is a, a whole bunch of components that they can mix and match in different ways uh, to make different vehicles. And VW is planning to launch up to 75 different nameplates across its nine automotive brands, all using the same basic set of components over the next five years. The first of those launched last summer in Europe as the ID3, which is a compact hatchback about the size of a Golf. And that was followed up a few months later by this one, the ID4, the first one to actually go on sale here in North America. The ID4 is a little bit taller, a little bit more crossoverish compared to the ID3, but it shares the same basic design language, a look that we're going to see on other Volkswagen electric models coming over the next several years. This has a, an EPA estimated range of 250 miles on a charge, and uh, it's surprisingly roomy given that it's, it's relatively compact dimensions. So let's take it for a drive and see what it's like. This is Twit. This episode of Hands on Tech is brought to you by Audible. Audible is the leading provider of spoken word entertainment. Delve into your next title on Audible with Audible Plus. New members can try Audible Plus for 30 days. Download the Audible app and get started with a free trial at audible.com slash hot or text hot to 500-500. So this is the second in a range of electric vehicles that Volkswagen brand is launching uh, based on its new modular electric toolkit um, and the acronym for the, the German uh, version of that is MEB. So this is referred to as their MEB platform. And Volkswagen has announced that they're planning to launch about 75 different nameplates uh, off of this platform. Uh, between now and 2025 off of their nine different automotive brands. Although some of the brands like, for example, uh, Bentley and Bugatti probably won't get any MEB based vehicles, but they've already launched uh, two um, in Europe and in North America. Um, the first was the ID3, which is based, uh, which is similar in size to the Golf, it's a hatchback, it's slightly smaller than this one. The ID4 is a little bit taller, a little more crossoverish, um, and it went on sale in Europe uh, late in 2020 and uh, started sales here in North America earlier this year, uh, early in 2021. Uh, I think the first deliveries were in March of this year. Uh, they've also got uh, some other models uh, in Europe. Um, for the, uh, the Skoda brand. Uh, and later this year here in North America, we'll also be getting the Audi Q4 e-tron, uh, which is again, based on the same architecture. So they all use the same set of basic components underneath the same set of motors, standard battery packs, um, a lot of the same, uh, the same electronics. Uh, they'll have unique bodies unique interiors. So the Audi Q4, for example, will look completely, I mean, it's a crossover is basically the same size as this one, but it'll have a completely different interior. It looks much more Audi, you know, Audi-like, uh, like other contemporary Audi models, uh, as well as the exterior styling will be more like Audi's. The ID4 has an 82 kilowatt hour lithium ion battery pack that sits under the floor 
and a 201 horsepower electric motor at the rear axle. And uh, it has an EPA estimated range of about 250 miles, uh, which is, I think is, is a quite, quite a good range. I think it's acceptable for almost everybody. Uh, you know, the vast majority of people never drive more than about 40 miles a day. Uh, so even if you live in northern climates where you get very cold weather or in parts of the country where it gets very hot, which increasingly is almost everywhere, uh, and you're using and you need to use your air conditioning, you're still going to get uh, well over 150 and in most cases closer to 200 miles of, of range for your normal driving, uh, even when you're using a lot of accessories. So that's that's always a good thing to have. Um, so there, there's plenty of range available. It also has fast charging support, uh, up to 120 kilowatts uh, fast charging. Uh, and when you get the ID the ID4, uh, as well as future Volkswagen electric vehicles, you'll get three years of uh, free fast DC fast charging at Electrify America stations. Uh, and currently there are uh, about 620 EA stations around the country uh, with getting close to, I believe, about uh, uh, over 3,000 chargers, individual chargers scattered among those, those uh, uh, stations. And Electrify America, is, in addition to this vehicle, uh, is one of the outcomes of the Dieselgate scandal part of the uh, multi-billion dollar settlement uh, that Volkswagen of America uh, had with uh, the EPA and Justice Department and various and California Air Resources Board and various other agencies was that they would spend $2 billion on electric vehicle charging infrastructure. Uh, and so what they did was they established a new business unit called Electrify America, uh, which is owned by Volkswagen of America, but it, it, it's, uh, it, it's actually, uh, a separate business unit of the company. And they have been building out these DC fast charging stations over the last couple of years. Uh, EA is also working with a number of other automakers in addition to, uh, in addition to Volkswagen Group, uh, such as Lucid, Ford, uh, and, uh, and Hyundai uh, to do uh, fast charging deals. So when you buy vehicles from any of those manufacturers, electric vehicles from any of those manufacturers, you will get uh, at least some uh, DC fast charging uh, complementary with the purchase of the vehicle, much as Tesla did early on when they launched uh, their supercharger network and offered free DC fast charging to early Tesla buyers. These days, uh, Tesla still offers free supercharging. Uh, in some limited instances, they do it occasionally as a promotion, uh, but most Tesla buy buyers today have to pay for their uh, fast charging or they get some limited amount for free. So the look, the interior design of this vehicle is completely new for Volkswagen. It's, it's actually shared. It's the same as the ID3. Uh, it's the same layout as, as the ID3. So it looks very similar to that, but it's different from any previous Volkswagen we've seen. Uh, this particular model is a first edition, uh, which is why it has the, the white trim, the white steering wheel, the white cluster, and, and the white uh, uh, door handles. Uh, but uh, later, later models, uh, I think, will be uh, a darker color that matches with the rest of the interior. But it's, it, uh, the, the general look, it will still be the same. So we have a large 12 inch centered touchscreen display here. Uh, you notice there's no knobs or physical controls. It's all touchscreen. And in fact, uh, it even has some gesture control built in. Um, and uh, the, I'll, I'll, I'll come back to the user interface here in, in a moment. Uh, and then we have a smaller display right in here, right here in front of the driver, which is attached to the steering column. So when you move the steering wheel up or down, this actually, the, the, the instrument cluster here moves with the steering column so that the steering wheel is never blocking it. Uh, off on the side of this instrument pod here, you'll find uh, the gear shift uh, control and it's, you just uh, give it a twist forward at the top to put it into drive or brake mode. It gives you two options. Drive mode uh, gives you a lower level of regenerative braking when you lift off the accelerator. It's more like uh, what you'd be accustomed to driving a, a gasoline car. Uh, and if you put it in brake mode, it's, it's equivalent of um, 
putting uh, conventional transmission into low gear uh, gives you stronger regenerative braking, closer to one pedal braking. It's not fully one pedal braking like you can get in a lot of other EVs like uh, BMWs or um, Minis or the um, uh, Ford Mustang Mach-E uh, or, or even the, uh, the Chevrolet Bolt for that matter because um, it won't bring the vehicle to a complete stop but it'll bring it down to about five miles an hour or so and then you have to get on the brake uh, and the and the, de and the regen braking even in, in the B mode is uh, a it's not quite as aggressive as what you'll find in some of those other vehicles so if you really like strong regen and, and I do um, you know you're not going to get you're not going to get quite as much in the ID4 as you would in some other vehicles but uh, you know, overall, it's it's pretty good, and, and you can do most of your driving without having to touch the brake uh, at any time. And in fact, the uh, the the pedals <laughs> kind of interesting. They, they've done a fun little uh, detail on these vehicles. Uh, they're you know obviously it's two pedals, no no manual transmission, so there's no clutch. But on the accelerator pedal, there's a little. Uh, arrow uh, that looks like a play button on a, on a music player uh, and then on the brake pedal there's a couple of vertical bars uh, that look like a pause button on a music player so play and pause uh, you know is, uh, is kind of a uh, just a fun little detail um, overall uh, this vehicle is surprisingly roomy it's out on the outside it's similar in size overall to most uh, compact crossovers you know the, the which are you know and that's right now you know aside from full-size pickup trucks is pretty far and away the most popular segment in the u.s market it has really overtaken mid-size sedans which used to be the the most popular uh so vehicles like the toyota rav4 uh, honda crv ford escape chevy equinox it's in that same size class as those vehicles but because of the fact that it's electric uh, it doesn't have any drive, you know, any drivetrain underneath. You just have the battery pack under the floor between the, the front and rear motors. Uh, it, and, and because you don't have an engine up front, it allowed Volkswagen designers to move the dashboard up and away. Um, it makes the vehicle feel really roomy inside, and it is quite roomy inside. It, it's, it's a very roomy car. Uh, you'll have no problem at all, you know, with uh, five adults uh, in this car uh, for, you know, for any normal driving road trip, uh, you know, three kids in the back, you know, probably be a little more comfortable than, than uh, three adults. But still, it, it feels very spacious. There's lots of hip and shoulder room, lots of height. Um, this model, uh, this is the first edition model. Uh, at least uh, has a full glass panoramic roof like what you'll find in, in most Teslas. Uh, the Mach-E's got one of those. Um, I think there will be some less expensive models uh, later on that have a, a steel roof. Um, and right now the, uh, the ID4 um, in the US, the, the first edition, which is what this is, like I said, you know, this, this is a trend that most automakers are doing these days is offering uh, limited first edition models uh, you know kind of following again in the pattern of Tesla you know when they when they originally launched the Roadster back in 2007 2008 uh, you know they sold the first batch the first hundred or so of those were founders edition models uh, and they've done limited first edition runs for each of their subsequent vehicles and now most manufacturers are doing that uh, Ford did a launch edition of the Mach-E uh, and um, VW is following with their first edition of the uh, of the ID4. They did a first edition ID3 in Europe as well. So this one uh, went for forty four thousand uh, dollars sticker price before the tax incentives. The first editions are all sold out now, so you can't get them anymore. But what you can order now is the ID4 Pro, which again is a single motor rear wheel drive version that starts at forty thousand dollars before incentives. Uh, and then you still have full eligibility from Volkswagen uh, through Volkswagen for the seventy five hundred dollar federal tax credit plus whatever state and local incentives there may be where where you happen to live. Uh, the um, uh, later on, uh, probably late this year or maybe the early part of 2022, uh, there will also be a less expensive uh, single motor version. And one of the interesting things that Volkswagen is doing with the MEB platform, Volkswagen you know, was one of the first manufacturers, very high volume mainstream manufacturers, 
to go to front wheel drive on their smaller vehicles. Because with a gas engine, front wheel drive, you can turn the engine sideways, uh, you can concentrate all the powertrain components in the front, uh, makes for a roomier, better packaging uh, and better traction um, because you've got the weight over the, the drive wheels. They generally don't, front wheel drive vehicles often don't handle as well as uh, all wheel drive vehicles or rear wheel drive vehicles uh, because the front wheels have to do both the steering and the, the tractive effort to, to get the, the car moving. Um, so generally rear wheel drive vehicles you know, have the best driving dynamics. So what Volkswagen's done with the, the ID family, with the MEB platform, is the default is uh, single motor rear wheel drive. Uh, so you, uh, you can split the workload between the front and rear tires. The fronts do the steering, the rears do the propulsion, uh, makes the car handle a little better. And this, this car, uh, this is, as I said, this is a single motor rear wheel drive. So um, it does, it does handle really well. Uh, and you know, that's, that's a trait that Volkswagen is Volkswagen vehicles had for a long time. They're, they tend to be very fun to drive. They're nimble. Um, they, uh, you know, they, even the front wheel drive models are, you know, uh, have really good driving dynamics. The same is true for the ID4. Um, and, uh, we haven't driven a, a rear wheel drive one yet, but certainly with the all wheel drive, it, it's, it is quite enjoyable to drive. The only downside really to the driving dynamics of this car is, <laughs> surprisingly enough, is the steering feel. Um, there's not a whole lot of st feedback uh, through the steering wheel when you're cornering. And what that means is uh, you know, in a car like, say, for example, my, you know, my old Mazda Miata um, or you know, a lot of performance cars or, or actually even, even a lot of mainstream cars, uh, the uh, uh, you know, when you're going around a corner and you're, you're steering, um, you'll get some force feedback uh, through the steering wheel. You know, as the as the forces on the front wheels build up as you as you're cornering, you'll feel the steering wheel pushing back a little bit against your hands, and so you can you can start to feel the limits of where uh, you know where where the limits of grip are. And it you know, when you're when you're driving briskly, um, you know that can be very handy. The, um, the, the weighting of the steering effort in this vehicle uh, is quite good. I have no, no issue with that. It's not over boosted. The, the power steering is not over boosted and it, it feels quite good. Uh, you know, it feels good in that respect, but there isn't really much in the way of feedback, which I, I thought was a little peculiar. But you know, now I'm on the highway, driving on the highway right now, and you can you can feel that, um, or you can you can <laughs> driving on the highway now. You can hear that uh, you know, even you know at 70 miles an hour, um, you know it's it's quite quiet in here. There's very little wind noise. Um, you know on the the frost heaves on on this particular highway, you, know, you do hear some of that thump coming through. But overall, uh, there's very little in the way of, of road noise coming through. Very little tire noise, which is generally to be expected on EVs because. EVs generally use very low rolling resistance tires, which also tend, generally tend to be fairly quiet. Even when we were on city streets, it was uh, quite a serene drive um, at speeds below 20 miles an hour. Uh, if you're just kind of cruising through your neighborhood, um, you actually, if you put the windows down or even with the windows up, you can hear the little bit of the, the hum uh, that uh, is programmed into here. There's a speaker underneath the car that uh, generates some sound. Uh, and this is a, a legal requirement now for electric vehicles. Because EVs are so quiet, you, know, you don't have the sound of the, the engine. They are required to make some, some sound, uh, some synthetic sound to alert pedestrians. Um, and you know, particularly for those uh, that are vision impaired, uh, that might not see you coming, uh, you know, being able to hear the vehicle coming, um, or you know, even, even for, um, you know, uh, even for those who can see, having that extra vi uh, audio cue uh, when a vehicle is coming before you step out into the road, if you if you haven't looked uh, properly, um, you know it's it's very handy to have that. And the sound that the ID4 makes, like many EVs, is sort of a, a spaceship kind of sound. You know, kind of a, a synthesizer, you know, humming sound that, that varies with the speed of the vehicle. Uh, the, the pitch changes a little bit. Um, one of the interesting trends recently has been 
um, automakers actually partnering with composers uh, to create sounds for EVs. Uh, BMW, for example, uh, has formed a partnership with Hans Zimmer, the, uh, the composer that has done a lot of movie scores to create uh, a, a unique soundtrack for its electric vehicles. And, and those will be actually debuting uh, later this year on the new BMW i4 and iX uh, EVs. And so uh, you know, they, they'll, have, they'll have a distinct sound from other vehicles. So the infotainment system in this car, you know, the, the overall user interface is not dramatically different from what you'll find you know, in most modern cars. You, know, you basically get a, a grid of large icons. And you can swipe through a couple of screens. This, this particular screen gives you uh, some widgets uh, that uh, you can see the, the map, the navigation map here. Uh, you've got the, the media player widget here. Uh, if, your, uh, if your phone is connected, uh, via either Android Auto or Apple CarPlay. And by the way, uh, the ID4 supports wireless uh, Android Auto and CarPlay, uh, which is great so you don't have to plug it in. And there is a uh, Qi wireless charger here underneath the console. Uh, so once you pair your phone, uh, then it will uh, engage the, uh, or it will activate the appropriate um, smartphone um, projection system. Uh, so you can control that from here. Um, you, the, uh, the vehicle widget here takes you to uh, the information screen where you can find, uh, see some of the status of various aspects of the car. Um, you can go to the data screen here and see uh, how much energy you've been using. Here you can see that I've driven uh, 202 miles since uh, the last time the car was plugged in several days ago um, at an average speed of 44 miles an hour. And I've averaged 3.2 miles per kilowatt hour, which is actually pretty decent. Uh, you know, some of the most efficient EVs out there, uh, like the Hyundai Ioniq, uh, you know, can get closer to four. And if, you, you know, if you're doing a lot of city driving where your speeds are lower, uh, then you can definitely get um, closer to four miles per kilowatt hour, uh, even in this car. Uh, as I said, I've, I've been doing quite a bit of highway driving over the last several days. Uh, so that, you know, that's dropped the mileage down a little bit because at higher speeds, you obviously have a lot more aerodynamic drag. But uh, it, overall, it's not bad. Uh, and the status screen here, you can check on various things like your, your mileage. Uh, let's see what message here. Uh, please charge vehicle. Yeah, I'm down to 41 miles uh, showing. And after I'm done uh, recording this, I will take the car over to an Electrify America station and, and charge it up. Um, and uh, that, so that's complimentary for the first three years uh, when you buy the ID4. Um, you can also um, check various other information. Uh, you, you get access to some of the vehicle settings through here, so you can change some of the settings as far as the lighting and mirrors and check tire pressures. Um, you can also uh, check some of the, the brake settings, uh, but of course not, it's not active, thankfully, uh, when you're driving. You can also change some of the uh, interior settings here, uh, things like the ambient lighting, um, the, uh, the roof, the interior lighting. If you, uh, you, can you can set your charging settings through the screen as well. Uh, so if you want to set it to ch start, ch plug it in, but you, want you don't want it to charge until later, perhaps uh, when your local utilities rates go down to uh, your off-peak uh, rates, you can do that. You can set that all up through here as well as also setting up preconditioning. So uh, you know, if the temperatures are either hot or cold, uh, you, can, you can set it to you can tell the car what time you want to leave in the morning uh, and it will uh, preset the climate control to your desired temperature while the car is still uh, plugged in uh, and that saves you a lot of energy from your uh, from your battery because uh, otherwise uh, it takes a lot more energy to raise or lower the temperature than it does to just maintain it. I mentioned earlier that there's no physical controls here underneath the screen for the climate control. Uh, and uh, it's, all, it's all touch surfaces. The same is also true on the steering wheel. Uh, the, the controls on the steering wheel are all touch controls, although there is haptic feedback uh, with these. Um, this car does have a, uh, 
reasonably full complement of driver assist features, including adaptive cruise control and lane keeping assist and blind spot monitoring. The blind spot monitoring signals are on the, uh, the inside of the mirror housings here. There's a radar based cruise control and there's a camera mounted up here above the mirror. Uh, for the lane keeping assist and forward collision alert. You can also, if you press the mode button here, you can select between eco, comfort, sport modes, uh, or custom mode. And with the assist button, you can change the uh, assist uh, settings here. So uh, some of the, the various elements like the uh, blind spot monitoring or lane keep assist, you can turn on and off there. Oh, there's a deer crossing the road slowly. <laughs> uh, the climate control, uh, there's uh, smart climate modes which are designed to uh, let you select what you want to do. So if you're, for example, if you, if you want to warm your hands or warm your feet on a cold day um, or cool your feet or just get fresh air, get quick cooling, the smart climate uh, does all that. It manages the fan speeds uh, and temperature controls uh, in a way that uh, is going to be most efficient and uses up the least amount of energy uh, from the battery, uh, which is very handy. You also have your classic climate controls where you can do it more manually, um, and, uh, but you know, that takes a little bit more, it's a little more fiddly just as it would be in a traditional vehicle. Because this is a widescreen display here, one of the things that uh, Volkswagen has done in implementing uh, their smartphone projection system is that, uh, and this is something that you'll find on newer cars, on, on a lot of uh, earlier implementations of Android Auto or Apple CarPlay, they were basically restricted to uh, using a four by three layout uh, on the screen, even if it was a wider screen display. Uh, newer versions of the smartphone projection systems actually allow the, uh, the manufacturer to set it up so that it will fill the entire screen. So you see we have a nice widescreen display here. In Android Auto, one tap gets you to your app launcher for all the various apps that are uh, compatible with Android Auto. And we've got similar things in, uh, in, in uh, Apple CarPlay if you're using that. This episode of Hands on Tech is brought to you by Audible. Have you ever wanted to read a memoir and just didn't have the time? <laughs> or maybe you found a title you couldn't put down, but you also need to fold the laundry. Yep, I've been there. Now you can do both because Audible makes it possible. When you're driving, cooking, cleaning your house or just relaxing, you can listen to amazing audio files with Audible. Audible is the leading provider for spoken word entertainment all in one place. At Audible, you can find the largest selections of audiobooks ranging from bestsellers and new releases to celebrity memoirs, languages, business, motivation, and a lot more. You get original entertainment from top celebrity creators and thousands of popular and binge worthy podcasts. Yeah, podcasts. They're now offering their newest plan, Audible Plus. Audible Plus gives you full access to their popular Plus catalog. Audible Plus is all about giving members a chance to listen to and discover new favorites and explore different formats like exclusive words plus music series or podcasts you never even considered before, even theatrical performances. You can listen all you want to thousands and thousands of popular audiobooks, original entertainment and podcasts, including ad free versions of your favorite shows and exclusive series. They're all available to download or stream so you can listen anywhere, anytime on any device and you never, ever lose your spot. To use your Audible membership, you need to download the Audible app. The Audible app is free and can be installed on all smartphones and tablets. I love using my Audible account. I just finished up a title by Mr. John McWhorter. Boy, that was so enlightening and really did teach me a lot about our interesting language that we speak. Listening to Audible will make you feel inspired, connected, and it's available in an all-in-one app. Audible Plus is your playlist for life. What are you waiting for? Delve into your next title on Audible with Audible Plus. New members can try Audible Plus for 30 days. Download the Audible app and get started with the free trial at audible.com slash hot or text hot to 500 500. That's A-U-D-I-B-L-E dot com slash hot or text hot to 500 500 to start your free trial today. 
I've been driving this vehicle around for the last several days and haven't plugged it in yet. Uh, I'm now down to 7% uh, state of charge, 22 miles left. I don't feel like driving it all the way to zero and waiting for a flatbed to bring me back here. So I have come to an Electrify America station where I'm going to try and fast charge this car and see what happens. So I'm hooked up here to one of the 350 kilowatt chargers. This particular station has six charging spots and uh, has support for up to 350 kilowatt charging. So for some of the cars like the Porsche Taycan, the upcoming Audi e-tron GT, and the Hyundai Ioniq 5, uh, they will charge at 350 kilowatts. This car will do, uh, I believe, 125 kilowatts. And uh, all I had to do uh, at this Electrify America station was just plug in the cable from one of the chargers. It initiated uh, and it has started uh, to charge uh, be, because uh, Electrify America and Volkswagen both support the new plug and charge standard. Uh, it's very much like what uh, Tesla does with their superchargers. So if you have a vehicle with plug and charge and uh, a station like EA or some other stations that support plug and charge, all you have to do is, if, as long as you have an account set up, all you have to do is plug the car, plug the, uh, the car into the charger and um, then uh, the, the charger will communicate with the car uh, and authenticate, check the, uh, the, the ID number of the car. Uh, once it authenticates you, it will automatically start charging. You don't have to mess around with any cards or NFC dong dongles or anything like that. The ID4 in most respects is an excellent EV. Um, and yeah, I think it was a wise decision on Volkswagen's part to launch uh, in North America with the ID4 instead of the ID3. You know, the ID3, uh, by all accounts, is you know, it's basically the same car, just a little bit lower. Um, and, and all the reviews have generally been really positive for it. Uh, but because it's you know, a, a compact hatchback, you know, it's, like I say, you know, roughly equivalent to a VW Golf, uh, which is nothing wrong with that. I love the Golf. I think it's a great car. Um, but it's also a segment that American consumers are generally not buying right now. They're, they're going for uh, crossovers. So I think it was a wise decision on Volkswagen's part to launch with a crossover. There's really not a lot to complain about with this car. It's very roomy inside. It's got plenty of cargo space in the back. It doesn't have a frunk uh, because, you know, VW made a design decision to, uh, to maximize the, the passenger space volume and minimize the front end of the vehicle. So when you look at it in profile, you'll see that it has a, a very short hood, very short front end. And what they've done is they've packaged uh, a lot of the hardware underneath the hood uh, front, the, with the front motor, uh, some of the power electronics, um, the climate control system is all packaged under the front hood, but it's a very short space compared to say a Tiguan. If you, if you put this side by side with a VW Tiguan, which is not all that different overall size, you'll see that the, the windshield is much further back on the Tiguan. There's a longer hood because you've got space for the engine and, and all of those other components in there. You don't have that in this particular vehicle. Uh, they've, they've pushed the, the bulkhead forwards. And so that didn't leave space for a front trunk. However, you do have a, a very spacious uh, rear cargo area, so you don't really need the front trunk. And you know, on a lot of vehicles, a lot of EVs, the, the front trunk is, you know, they're, they're doing it now because, uh, you know, because Tesla started that process uh, with their vehicles. But uh, in many cases, you know, it's, that space is usually, that volume is usually so small that uh, it's not really very useful for pretty much anything except holding your charging cable. That's about all you can usually fit in most of these vehicles. So, uh, you know, one exception obviously is the Mach-E where, uh, you know, they made the design, de design decision because they're calling it a Mustang, you know, to give it different proportions. So it actually does have a very spacious front trunk. But I don't think that, I don't think it was much of a sacrifice to give that up in this vehicle because you have so much room in the back uh, behind the seats for all kinds of gear. You know, if you're gonna take a road trip or you know, put your, uh, your beach gear back there or you know, whatever it is you wanna do, uh, you can fold down the rear seat. Uh, you have a huge volume inside here for all of your stuff. So I think that uh, you know, they made some, generally made some really good design decisions. Um, there are, you know, 
right now, you know, this is still fairly early with this all new platform for Volkswagen. And this is one of the, the first times that Volkswagen has really tried to move in the direction of creating a software defined car. Um, they've done a lot of new software in this vehicle. In fact, the launch of the ID3 uh, in Europe uh, last year was delayed by about s at least six or seven months. Um, you know, VW was building cars, but they weren't selling them. They were just stockpiling them uh, because uh, they had a lot of software issues early on. It took them quite a while to fix all the software problems, or at least to get it to a point where it was uh, shippable. Um, you know, most you know most of the the major problems have been resolved now. Um, however, you know, the infotainment system in particular is um, still a, a little laggy. You know, it's not quite as responsive as the best smartphones these days. Uh, you know, if, if you're using a modern smartphone, you, you know, when you swipe through different screens, you know, you'll, you'll feel that it's very responsive. Um, this one is, it's not bad, it's not terrible, but it's, it's definitely not as responsive as, you know, the, the latest iPhone or Pixel or Galaxy that's in your pocket. Um, but it's, it's passable, it's usable. So, you know, I, I would say, you know, if you're interested in this, you know, go and, and find one, you know, find a VW dealer and, and you know, take it for a test drive, you know, try out the, the infotainment system, you know, see if it's something you can live with. I think most people will probably live with it just fine. Uh, I, I don't, I don't have a, a major issue with it, but um, every once in a while it will, you know, it may hang up uh, or uh, you know, I have had a couple of instances, for example, uh, the volume control is right here, uh, where instead of when I tap on the, the volume button, uh, instead of bringing that up, it brings up um, voice operation uh, level, which doesn't really seem very useful. Um, and I'm not sure why it's there. Uh, and I can't actually, I'm not able to actually change the volume when that happens. But um, overall, uh, you know, I, I would say that they've, they've done a really good job on this all new generation of vehicle. I think, you know, what we'll see going forward is this is going to continue to evolve. You know, one of the, I think the next model for North America uh, that's going to be based on this is going to be the new ID Buzz, which is VW's electric revival of the classic microbus. Uh, you know, it's going to be interesting to see, if, you know, as, Sales of minivans have declined over the years, uh, you know, as, peop as people have also left minivans for crossovers. And it's going to be interesting to see if consumers actually go for the ID Buzz. Um, there's certainly been a lot of interest in a revival of that that micro that uh, microbus design theme, uh, but I think you know in this case, um, you know, it, VW is not only going to be selling the 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 ID Buzz here in North America. It's also going to be available in Europe, where um, you know some of their vans, their smaller vans uh, like the Caravan, um, uh, have have been more popular. Uh, and you know it's it's also going to be available as a cargo van version, uh, at least in Europe anyway. I'm not sure if they're going to sell the cargo van uh, here. And those you know those are quite popular in Europe, you know, as a midsize to smaller cargo van. For deliveries, uh, the uh, the other interesting thing with the ID Buzz is it's also the platform that Volkswagen is going to be using for their first uh, robo taxi uh, that they are developing with Argo AI, who they invested in last year, um, and, and that's the same company that is also partly owned by Ford, and they're working with Ford, and Ford is going to be launching their first automated vehicles uh, next year with the Argo uh, self-driving system. Uh, and that's going to be launching. Those are going to be launching in 2022. The um, VW ID Buzz, automated ID Buzz, is going to be launching uh, sometime in the 2024, 2025 timeframe. Um, but uh, you know, for now, you know, I think that this is, you know, this this vehicle is you know, generally really well executed. It's very solid. I have had nothing, you know, aside from some minor software glitches. I've had nothing that I would classify as a build quality problem. Uh, you know, everything is, you know, it's, it's really well put together um, is, as is typical for Volkswagens, you know, very generally very high quality materials. You know, it feels fairly premium, even though there, there are some details that, 
you can see where VW did some, made some interesting cost cutting decisions. Um, most notable of which is the window switches on the driver's side uh, armrest here. Um, in most cases with a four door car, you will find four window switches. Um, but what VW's done here, um, you know, window switches, you know, all, all the switch gear is surprisingly expensive to engineer, manufacture, to assemble it. Uh, so what they've done is they've gone with just two window switches here for the driver and the passenger side. And then there's a touch button right in front of it that allows you to select rear. So uh, by default, the window switches control the, the, the front windows. Uh, and then the, um, when you tap the, the rear uh, button here, then you can open and close the rear windows. So it's, it's an unusual choice. Um, it takes a little getting used to, but uh, it's, it's not bad. Um, so I, I think that you know, if you're looking for, you know, if you're looking to make the jump to an EV, um, you know, this is not quite as sporty as what you would get with say the Mach-E. Uh, you know, the Mach-E is also available with a, a longer range. Um, but I think, you know, this is, this is one that's definitely worth taking a look at. There are going to be a, a number of other uh, EVs coming to market over the next uh, 12 months that are kind of in the same class, um, most notably uh, from uh, Hyundai and Kia, uh, their new eGMP platform. The, uh, the Hyundai Ionic 5 is similar in size to the ID4 and it's gonna launch uh, this fall, uh, and it will have a range of up to 300 miles. Uh, it will also have support for 350 kilowatt charging. And I think uh, Hyundai has said that that one should be able to charge from 10 to 80% in about 18 minutes, uh, as opposed to you know, probably about 40 minutes or so, 40, 45 minutes for this car. So there's uh, you know, some interesting design compromises that VW's made. Um, in order to try to keep the, the price down. And you know, there will be versions of, of this vehicle uh, that uh, start in the low to mid $30,000 range uh, eventually. Uh, they're not available yet. For now, like I said, $40,000 for the ID4 Pro is, is your starting point. But after the incentives, uh, that gets you down to at least $32,500. Uh, you know, and and, and again, if you live in California, you can get even less. And you know you also have to keep in mind that you do get uh, three years of free DC fast charging, and a lot of the Electrify America stations are located adjacent to highways. So if you're doing road trips, um, you know they will uh, they'll be very accessible. They um, Electrify America has had some reliability issues with some of their stations. Um, they have used a couple of different vendors for the actual chargers themselves that they install at their stations. And there was one particular vendor um, that their chargers have been very problematic. Um, EA has ended their relationship with that company and they're replacing those chargers with chargers from another, another vendor that has been more reliable. But overall, you know, I think that this is, uh, you know, I, you know, this is definitely an, an EV worth considering if you want something that's a little bit larger uh, than a Chevy Bolt, uh, you know, and looks a little more like a traditional crossover. I think the, the design, the exterior design of this car is also uh, really attractive. I think it's a, it's a great looking vehicle uh, for, you know, given that it's, um, given that it's a, a crossover, you know, it, it's obviously, you know, the shape is very similar to what you'll find from a lot of other manufacturers. But I think VW has done some, made some interesting design decisions with the, the lighting, uh, the front and rear lighting in particular, the signature lighting around the headlights, uh, and also the, the way that they've done the roof, uh, you know, the, the roof rails in a contrasting color, the, the sort of pale silver roof rails, and especially on this one with the, the blue bodywork and then the silver roof rails, uh, I think is a, is a really great look. So I would definitely give this a, a you know, uh, it's worth a look. It, you definitely want to, uh, uh, evaluate this one as one of the options if you're ready to uh, to make the jump to electric drive. And for Hands On Tech, I'm Sam with Blue Salmon. Keep up with all the hottest tech news and gadgets. Visit twit.tv. There you'll be able to find and subscribe to all our tech shows. Thanks for watching Hands On Tech.